Good morning. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Fire Commissioners. Date is November 17th. The time is 9.05 in the morning. Roll call. Let the record reflect Commissioners Ibarra, Glacier, Parra, and Woodsbury are present, and we have a quorum. Thank you. Slide salute, and then the set I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in a moment of silence in honor of past and present members of Los Angeles Fire Department, Mr. George Elias, for the death of our community. So we start with Commissioner Comments. Okay, I attended the uh, Youth Academy um, graduation event. It was really uh, a re remarkable event, and uh, Commissioner Woods Gray gave a great uh, comment on behalf of the commission uh, as a former teacher, and she really, I think, connected with the uh, with the graduate uh, with the graduates. And then, obviously, uh, many of us attended the uh, LA Fire Department uh, Foundation event, and. Uh, and and really uh, an amazing group of uh, firefighters were honored in that event. I thank you to Air Operations and uh, the crew at uh, Fire Station 114. I had a nice uh, visit with them. Um, got to see uh, some of their work and um, also uh, got to take a, a look at a lot of the brush country we have out there. It's um, amazing how big the city is and how much brush there is out there so uh, it was very uh, very educational uh, afternoon spent with them okay very good good morning um, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, foundation luncheon and the cadet um, graduation which was I was impressed with the uh, cadet program because of the number of students that they had and uh, the number of women and the diversity of the uh, group in itself uh, if we can mentor the, that group and keep up with them, maybe we can get some of them to become firefighters. And the chief was there also and gave a, a nice presentation as he usually does. I also attended the, um, the luncheon. Again, we had many firefighters there who, we didn't have any women, I don't think, in that group. I kind of noticed that. But we had many women <laughs> firefighters who were recognized for going beyond the call of duty. And uh, the stories were just uh, really, really impressive. And I know Karen had tissues on the table because she told me they was the stories were tearjerkers. And they really were very, very impressed with the people who work for this department. I've always been impressed with them. I was just more impressed with that particular group. Um, and then I also attended the African American Firefighters Museum's open house on Sunday. It was the first time they had done this, and uh, it was well well attended. Um, good opportunity to go through the museum again. We've all many of us have been there before, but it was a good opportunity for community and other people to go through. Um, it was attended by uh, Councilman Curran Price came through. Uh, Xavier Arslowski came by. He's a big has been a big supporter of the fire department. He came over too, which was really good. Um, and I would just, and it's, this is our first time, but in the future, I hope that we'll see more uh, participation from the fire department at the open house. It would be nice to see other people there too. Great, um, report of the fire chief. Thank you, Madam President. On November uh, 3rd, we had a press conference with the mayor to talk about uh, the one year anniversary of executive directive number five, which is emergency drought response. And uh, fire department, we've been able to contribute. We've saved um, millions of gallons in our recent engineer practical test exam. Uh, many of our stations are uh, renovating their front lawns to have drought resistant uh, landscaping. And we've given the direction to shut off our sprinklers. So we're contributing in that effort. Mm -hmm. uh, November 4th through the 6th, I was with uh, Labor, a UFLAC uh, partners. We went to the California Firefighter Joint Apprenticeship Committee Conference 
Uh, a lot of interesting presentations. We did some work there. We actually uh, approved uh, more items to purchase using the CAFJAC funds. On uh, November 7th, we had the Mayor's Crisis Response Team graduation uh, at City Hall. We graduated approximately 100 or so more people to participate in that great program. The fire department is becoming one of the biggest users of the Mayor's Crisis Response Team, and I consider them equal uh, first responders with us. They, they bring a tremendous capability that we don't have within our department. Uh, we also that day we attended the Youth Academy graduation uh, at Frank's Place uh, headed by Chief Antoine McKnight. Um, there was a lot of kids there and, and I concur uh, with the previous statement. We need to capture these kids uh, when they're younger so we can start cultivating future firefighters. Later that evening, there was the Firefighter Cancer Support Gala uh, held at the Bonaventure, and they featured uh, Boston and all their efforts on what they're doing to prevent cancer. And I was sitting next to President Lima, and we talked about the things that we're doing and things we want to do. And for the last several years, we've been doing things like purchasing a second set of turnouts, buying more extractors. Uh, we have a temporary suspension of our flashover training till we can see or find a, a better type of wood to burn that has less carcinogens, and on and on and on. I think we're on the forefront of that, but there's more that we can do. November 12th was our uh, annual, hope to be annual, our Medal of Valor Award Luncheon. Long overdue, we honored 37 of our people. It was a really a uh, feel-good type of event. Um, we should always look for opportunities to praise our people, and some of the stories were amazing. And uh, I, we're going to make that an effort uh, to do that on an annual basis. Later that night, we had a town hall meeting in San Pedro. The focus was El Nino. Uh, well over 100 people from the community were there. Uh, Chief Palacios was there, Chief Villanueva. Uh, very positive interaction. The whole entire city family was represented from multiple departments. It was a very positive thing. And it's, it was a second of four that are planned to educate the community on what to do in preparation of El Nino. And then this past Saturday, uh, I spoke at the Mayor's Youth Council orientation meeting at City Hall. There's about 300 kids, high school kids, and I recruited. And I told them that uh, the LAFD is looking for future firefighters. And we have several programs that are available. We have the Banning program, the Wilson program, the Dorsey, Dorsey High School program down the road. We have Crew 3. We have the uh, Cadet program. So a lot of good interaction and a very positive type of interaction for us. That concludes our report, my report. Thank you, Chief. So moving on to 2B, which is verbal report by the Department on Significant Incidents from November 4th through November 17th. Good morning, Commission. Good morning. Madam President, Daryl Arbuth, Knott Valley Bureau. Just two uh, real brief things I'll talk to you about. Uh, one, we did deployments uh, actually today and yesterday because of the high winds, and then last week we actually did two additional deployments for brush-related weather. So um, you can see our the droughts, This we're kind of going into the fifth year of our drought, and it's starting to, we'll probably see it in like you see the increase of these deployments. The second is uh, yesterday we had a, a structure fire. And we had a firefighter injured, uh, got his foot caught in the aerial ladder while he was doing firefighting efforts. So uh, he's ex he had surgery yesterday. Is expected to likely go home today. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any others? No. So uh, verbal report by the medical director for the same time period. Good morning, Madam Commissioner, Commissioners, Chief, Council, uh, EMS Chief Tim Ernst. Um, I have just a few items here I'll talk about. Uh, we're currently still standing at about a normal rate of about 600 transports daily for EMS incidents, and I'll review just a few of the high publicity incidents that you may have seen here in the last several weeks. And two of those sort of are grouped into some of our more specialty uh, provider groups. Firstly, uh, as the Commissioner mentioned, uh, our air ambulance assets. And having flown over some of the brush areas, I'm sure you saw how remote some of those areas are. Uh, last week, we were able to hoist and transport a patient that was lost in the wilderness for five days. You don't normally think about wilderness search and rescue as a function of the LA City Fire Department, but we actually have a fair amount of uh, remote area rescues, uh, almost weekly, especially when the weather's nice. 
And then secondly, uh, you probably also saw in the news there was a 23-year-old male that fell while climbing. And actually, as he, he fell, he lodged himself between some rocks. Mm -hmm. And he was also hoisted and, and uh, transported by air ambulance to a trauma center. Uh, several of our notable uh, cycle team incidents, as you probably know, uh, at most all of our USC games, we deploy cycle teams to handle some of the, uh, the diverse spread out crowds. Uh, last week, they deployed at the USC versus Arizona game. Uh, two transports came out of that. And then most recently, just this last weekend, uh, there was a, a hip hop concert uh, down in the same area where about approximately 25,000 participants took part. And unfortunately, at a lot of those venues, alcohol and drugs becomes a big issue. And we had 22 patient con contacts at that event. Um, last week, also a very tragic, notable incident. Uh, you saw that we had two young teenage victims that were uh, shot at close range. Uh, those were transported. Probably the only uh, most notable thing that came out of that was the need for some uh, crisis intervention with all the members that were involved in that. And then you saw yesterday, as a result of the winds, we had some issues with trees down. And probably most notably, one of the trees actually caught a uh, vehicle and trapped a person inside. They were actually able to buck up the tree mm -hmm. and then complete a physical rescue on that patient. Uh, if you have no questions, that completes my report. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. So moving on to presentations. Captain Daniel Curry, Public Information Officer. Good morning. At this time, uh, I'd like to call up uh, Kenneth Wandell to, to the podium, and I will talk a little bit about him. So you may know that uh, Kenneth Wandell is retiring at the end of the month. And I say Kenneth, but we all know him as Kenny. Uh, he actually started with the LAFD really as a second career. Uh, he had worked in his father's shop for many years. He had a lot of uh, background in automotive repair. He also had done some earthquake retrofitting on gas meters before he came to us. So really a second career, almost as a hobby. He came to the uh, Los Angeles Fire Department in May of 2008, and he was first assigned to the light vehicle shop, and he eventually was detailed over to the parking level, the fire department parking level, City Hall East, what we know as P2. And he really has been a perfect fit on P2. Uh, while, he, while he's been at P2, Kenny has been responsible for maintaining and keeping the various headquarters staff vehicles clean, fueled, and ready for action. And he also coordinated pool vehicles whenever a vehicle was in need. And I, I do have one uh, story uh, an anonymous inspector said of Kenny. And this is a story that happened. Uh, I am an inspector who home garages a sedan due to on-call status. Having the sedan in proper operating condition is key to my ability to respond if needed and get back home to my family. Recently, my sedan broke down at my house due to a malfunctioning timing sensor. It was towed to the downtown shops. Kenny and Larry at the P2 shops salvaged the part from another Dodge Stratus and took the part to the main shops where the repair was completed in one day. I had expected to be without my sedan for an extended period of time, but was happily surprised by the quick turnaround. This is not the first time that the shops in general, and specifically Kenny and Larry at P2, have provided exceptional service. They have always managed to locate a pool car for me when needed, repaired items with short notice. Thank you for the exceptional service. Kenny uh, has won numerous awards in his short career with the Los Angeles Fire Department in 2012, he was named the Civilian Employee of the Year. He also won an Employee of the Month Award, and in June 2013, he won the LAFD Maintenance Section Bravo Award for conduct that exemplifies the core values of the Los Angeles Fire Department. And I can, I can just speak for myself. I know in the two, my two tours of duty on, at City Hall East, I probably never had to fill up my car. Uh, Kenny's always taken care of that and also any maintenance that needed to be done. Kenny's true dedication and love for the LAFD family is shown every December when he volunteers to suit up as Santa. I know it's a big surprise that he could do that. <laughs> uh, for the annual family and friends Christmas party at the shops. 
This is a true display of kindness and his big heart. And so now you go on to your third career, <laughs> retirement, right? Well deserved, Kenny, and we wish you Godspeed on your new adventure. Congratulations. And I have a, I have a presentation. Right here. Right here. Let me read, uh, I'll read the uh, certificate of retirement. Kenneth M. Wandell, mechanical helper, Whereas you retired from the department, we have the wrong date here, we'll, we'll fix it, effective November 28th, 2015. And whereas you unselfishly served our nation honorably while in the United States Army from 1969 to 1971, and while you worked as a mechanic for your family business, was in sales and service for the Indian Motorcycle Company, sales and service, fire extinguishers, was in service for a home weatherization company, and then oversaw the installation of automatic gas shutoff valves for earthquakes. And, as, and whereas you were appointed to the department on May 25, 2008 and had served professionally for over seven years a mechanical helper in the supply and maintenance division at NOM P2. Whereas you received the prestigious Employee of the Year Award. Whereas you earned the admiration and respect of your peers and subordinates through your dedication and commitment to the fire service in the Los Angeles Fire Department. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Los Angeles Fire Department does hereby express gratitude and appreciation to mechanical helper Kenneth M. Wandell for devoted, loyal, and invaluable service in providing professional expertise and knowledge to benefit the citizens of the City of Los Angeles and does hereby extend best wishes for a healthy, happy and rewarding retirement. Kenny, I'm not sure what where to start. Uh, when I think of Kenny, I think about somebody with a can-do attitude fitting in with a can-do organization, always pleasant, strong work ethic, I thought initially he did look like Santa Claus, too, when I first met you. So I could see where you might play Santa Claus. I didn't know you used to work for an Indian motorcycle company. I wish I would have known that sooner. I could have talked to you about my, my motorcycle. But I never uh, had any concerns about our vehicles being prepared to respond. Uh, Kenny, you're a, a valuable part of our team. I wish I could keep you. Um, and there was a few times we had to respond out of headquarters to go to an emergency incident. It's nice to know that the rig's ready to go and, and you kept it uh, maintained. You kept it uh, sparkling like our fire trucks. And that shows pride and a strong work ethic. I wish you well in your retirement. And uh, you're always welcome to come back and play a guest role of Santa Claus, Kenny. Congratulations. And you'll notice that this, uh, the shield says mechanic. I've never seen that before. It's pretty special. Congratulations, Kenny. Just thank you very much. Um, I've really enjoyed my time here at the fire department. Um, I've taken pride of what I've done. Um, I've always have tried to make this place a happy place to work in. Um, and my memories that I have had here, um, I'll carry for a long time. I. You guys have all been great. I consider you guys my friends, um, not just my bosses, but I've always kind of thought of you guys as friends. So, and again, I don't know what else to say, but thank you very much. And uh, I'm, glad it, I'm glad I had that opportunity to be able to work with you guys. Thank you.
Only one, right? Presentation. Chief, only one, right? Presentation. Okay, good. So, moving on to consent agenda items, items four. Okay, move to uh, adopt the recommendation for item 4A. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, 5A is regular agenda items. 5A is report by the department on status and disposition of LAFD matters referred to other meetings. Good morning, Madam President, Commissioners, Chief Julie and Sandy. I'm Graham Everett. I'm the Chief of Staff with the report. Uh, for council and committee activity from October 22nd to October 30th. Um, everything that's in your packet is current. Uh, there was no outstanding items. Um, one item of note that will be heard tomorrow, which was continued to tomorrow, is actually an LAPD report back, but we're supposed to be at the table with them uh, regarding the um, uptick in shootings and homicides in the south part of Los Angeles, and so we'll be there with LAPD tomorrow, but uh, no other action was taken on that item. Is there any questions about what was provided? Thank you. Okay, move to uh, receive and file item 5A. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. 5B is report by the department on the quarterly report on the forecast exits of drop and rollies. It's 5B. Good morning, Commissioners. Norma morning. Gutierrez, Fire Department Personnel Services. So you have in front of you the report for the quarter ended September 30th of the drop uh, quarterly report. Do you have any questions? Nope. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, move to receive and file item 5B. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So 5C is report by the department on the LEFD recruitment plan for fiscal year. 2015 to 2016. Good morning, Commissioners, Madam President, Chief, Julie, Sandy. I'm Alicia Welch, Battalion Chief in charge of the Firefighter Recruitment Section, and I'm happy to be here today to talk about our uh, Firefighter uh, Recruitment Plan. And while I get our presentation spun up here, can we just click past this and uh, put my PowerPoint up, please? Los Angeles is a very diverse city. We need to have a uh, fire department that's reflective of the diversity of the city that we work in. Um, today what I'm going to do is talk about uh, the plan, generally, I'll talk about our current status, where we sit now in the city in terms of demographics and the Los Angeles Fire Department workforce makeup. I'll talk to you about our recruitment section. It's been enhanced significantly uh, this past budget cycle. 
and I'll talk about our recruitment campaign. We have a timeline uh, for recruitment that we're trying to accomplish in our next hiring uh, process. Some of the ways that we're gonna be able to accomplish the work is through uh, very focused and dedicated women's recruitment. Uh, social media has been something that we've been very focused on over the last four months and we've seen significant improvements in our followership. Uh, data collection and analysis is something that before my time in the recruitment section, I couldn't really track that we were doing much data analysis, but I'm happy to show you today that everything we do is being collected, measured, and analyzed. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our targets and techniques for recruitment, and then I'll talk to you about the uh, Los Angeles strategic plan, our goal for recruitment, and how we're going to accomplish some of the uh, some of the goals that we've set forward that uh, Chief Terrazas and Mayor Garcetti have set. So here we are. Here's the makeup of the city of Los Angeles. I hope some of you can see in the back, you can see here. Uh, the, the graphic on the left indicates the makeup of the city as of 2010. It was made up of 20% white, 49% Hispanic, 14% Asian, and 9% black. Okay, that was in 2010. As of July, in a report that I got from our personnel uh, department, our fire department was made up 49.2% uh, Caucasian, 11, uh, almost 12% 12 uh, black, 31% Hispanic, and 7% uh, Asian, uh, and 0% Native American. So what that indicates to me as the new leader of the firefighter recruitment section is we have work to do. If we want to accomplish the goal set forth in the strategic plan, uh, we have work to do in those underrepresented groups, and I'm going to tell you today how we're going to accomplish that. Basically, this breaks down for you um, the makeup of our department. In total, we have 31, uh, 3,191 firefighters. Uh, 89, I repeat, 89 of those firefighters are women. And uh, for me, that's not good enough, and I think for you, uh, that's not good enough either. So here, it's just another representation, 11% uh, African Americans, 31% Hispanic, 5% Asian, and you add the 1.8% Filipino, so we're at about 7% Asian uh, American firefighters on our department, and 0.44% Native American. Um, <coughs> We need to improve these numbers so that we can be more reflective, again, of the city we serve. Here's a graphic that depicts where we are in terms of gender. 2.7% uh, of us are uh, women, and don't be fooled, commissioners, that the, the women behind me here today, there's only a, a few of us here. 2.7% of us are women firefighters, 97.3 are male. So what are we going to do about it? Well, thank you, Chief Terrazas. What we're going to do is build a firefighter recruitment section that has the ability to get out there in the community, to get to military bases, to get to high schools and career days. Uh, we've put together a section and a staff that can get out there and focus on the work that needs to be done to improve those numbers. So the firefighter recruitment section is built now of three units. We have a recruitment unit. It's led by Captain Doug Lewis, who's sitting behind me. Preparatory programs unit, which is the unit that puts together all the preparatory classes and programs for future firefighter candidates. And then youth development. And that, uh, that unit is led by Captain Eddie Merez, who's standing behind me. I've got Captain Tammy Chick here with me. That's Katie. Tammy's behind me. Tammy's on light duty, and she serves and the role of women's recruitment officer right now on a temporary basis. Here's our makeup. So this is our department organization, and I want to just real quickly tell you the areas that we're focusing on. If you look under, uh, across from me at the side, I think it's important to indicate our stakeholders who we're working with. Uh, Drew is sitting behind me here from the mayor's office. We don't make many moves or decisions without including the mayor's <laughs> office. City Council we work closely with, Neighborhood Councils are a stakeholder, and the employee organizations, all of them, uh, LA Women in the Fire Service, Dentorians, uh, Los Bomberos, all are considered when we make decisions and we do recruiting in the firefighter recruitment section. Uh, if you look below me, you'll see Women's Recruitment Officer. That position is proposed. That's something that we've asked for in uh, next year's budget. 
Why do I feel like I need a, a woman's recruitment officer? Well, when you look at the graphic and you see 2.7% of the firefighters are Los Angeles are women, I think that indicates to me that we need some leadership in that regard, somebody who can look at the process and the problem analytically and critically and come up with solutions so that we can increase our numbers of women firefighters with qualified qualified women. We don't want to just increase our numbers. We want quali qualified candidates to come and join our force. Um, some other areas that you'll see in this organization chart, information and data management is an area that I'm very um, focused on, thanks to the um, mentorship of my former boss, Chief uh, Vitovich. We measure, track, collect data on everything we do now. And I'm going to give you a demonstration today of how we do that and how I'm able to target my recruitment. Social media has been a huge area where we've improved. Um, we have another partner and stakeholder in our recruitment, and that's the city personnel department. We work closely with them to do our recruitment. They had one person in uh, the personnel department who was in charge of uh, social media, both for the fire and police department. So before we took over social media in uh, February or, uh, September, we had approximately, I'm embarrassed to say this, 600 followers. 600 followers on our join LAFD site and today we've uh, almost increased that by 200 percent every month we're increasing not only our followers but our page likes and our reach and so I have a bunch of stats with me today that I'm not going to bore you with but social media is huge and that's how we're keeping people interested in the job of firefighter and that's how we reach all genders and ethnicities is through social media so I have a captain Rick uh, Nahara who's focused on that for me so uh, as you look at the org chart, how are we made up? Uh, under the prep, uh, prep programs unit, we have written exams that we can help a candidate prepare for their written exam. Oral interview practice is something that we're very engaged with right now because the personnel department is currently in the process of uh, conducting oral interviews for firefighter candidates. Um, so we're doing a lot of classes on nights, Tuesday, Thursday nights, and Saturdays. We do a lot of oral interview practice and mock oral interviews. CPAT, in order to be a firefighter, you have to be physically fit. You have to pass a California um, physical abilities test or candidate physical abilities test. That's a 10, um, an 8 circuit uh, uh, physical test. And so we have practice sessions every other Saturday, and whenever a candidate wants to make an appointment, they can come down to Frank Hodgkins and go through that course with us. A new program that you see at the bottom there is called the Applicant Orientation Program. Um, Commissioner Glazier and I talked a lot about the fire department in the past sitting at um, booths and events, handing out information, handing out paper, you should be a firefighter. We did a lot of that in the past, but we never closed that recruitment loop until this, until we, we designed the uh, applicant orientation program. So, Madam President, if I was recruiting you today and I got your contact information through this app that I have on my iPad, you filled in this simple form in this app that Captain Chick created for us. You fill this in, it takes you about 30 seconds. So now, before I get back to the office, our secretary could have followed up to you with an email and told you all the resources that the fire department and the recruitment section have. But then also we can invite you on Wednesday night to come down to fire station, old fire station 21, where we can tell you about the testing process, about the job of firefighter. We can put turnouts on you in a bottle. We can expose you to ladders and hose and physical fitness. So that the relationship doesn't end when I met you at a table and I gave you a piece of paper and said, you should be a firefighter. We're getting more detailed about how we recruit firefighters. We make a connection. We follow up with them through an email and an invitation to come to the applicant orientation program. And then before somebody, before we push somebody into the joint LAFD and to apply for a firefighter, they should know more about the testing process and the job before they dive head first into this process that's going to take them probably several years to get through. So the applicant orientation program, we look forward to having you guys come out and uh, observe that because we're proud of that program. Uh, the recruitment unit, Captain Lewis sitting behind me, he's doing a lot of targeted recruitment on military bases. There's five locally that we go to. 
We're spending a lot of time at colleges and in athletic departments because we know uh, firefighters typically come from some sort of athletic uh, program and they also should have some sort of educational um, background as well. Um, we're just starting to look at the faith-based community and find um, quality people from the faith-based community that we're going to recruit as firefighters. And last night at the Oxnard Fire Academy, my recruiters were out there giving a focus presentation to firefighter um, acad academy students and fire technology students. So that way we're going right to the source. We're going to people now already that have an interest in the fire service that have dedicated themselves to an education or getting through an academy so that we're not wasting our time just sitting at tables handing out flyers and saying, here, go on, join LAFD, and you should apply to be a firefighter. We're focusing our efforts at those specific areas. And youth development, as the chief said earlier, we're spending a lot of time in at, uh, high schools right now, particularly at Wilson High School, where we have 11, uh, 11 um, high school students that are going through our first magnet high school program. Captain Merez is out there um, weekly. He's in junior high schools recruiting, um, trying to boost interest in these, uh, these youth development programs that we have. So what are we doing? Goal eight in Safer City, recruit, develop, and retain a professional and diverse workforce. The, the pie charts that I showed you earlier indicate where our efforts need to be focused. Uh, we don't have uh, enough women, and just about every group uh, is underrepresented. So that's what myself and my staff are focused on. Here's our timeline. I'm not going to go into it month by month, but I think it's important for you to know that we do have a timeline and we do have targets. And uh, starting um, next month, tentatively, the job of firefighter bulletin should open. In January, we'll start uh, our written prep um, seminars again. Advertising will be um, going hot and heavy on LA, joinlafd.org. We'll start a recruitment campaign. And in January, Chief Arbuthnot, this isn't a secret, but we're coming to uh, the Valley Bureau and we're gonna have a, a career expo in your, in your bureau in January. We hope that you'll join us. That one is going to be women focused and we'd like to have our, our leaders in city government there supporting that effort. In February, it's targeted that the written test will, the new written test will start. And then also we'll have a career expo in uh, February to honor African American History Month That'll be at the Crenshaw Christian Center in uh, South Bureau. March, we're going to continue another, uh, should be with you, Chief Castro, in uh, West Bureau. We'll have another expo. We'll be continuing with our written prep programs. And in April, we'll finish at uh, Operations Central Bureau with Chief Flegel at Frank Hodgkins for our, uh, for our last, probably, uh, career expo uh, next year. In May, you see um, targeted we're targeted to begin accepting applications so future firefighters will be able to apply for firefighter after they've taken the written exam and on fire service day in may we're going to focus uh, our efforts on recruitment during fire service day as well june we're going to continue on accepting applications um, tentative fire department expo again we're, we want, we're going to want to focus on all of these people that we've met at military bases and college recruitment in june and in July, um, it's tentative that the application process will close, filing will close, and um, the target for written testing will close also. We'll continue on with oral prep programs. We'll get those candidates ready for their oral interview. Um, we'll continue on with our candidate, uh, preparing candidates for their CPAT test. In August, that's tentatively scheduled that we'll have our first stratified random sampling from our new test so that folks will get selected to come and take their oral interview and we'll be moving forward with our new uh, test process. And in October, it's targeted that LAFD will uh, review and begin uh, conditional job offers. That'll be you, Chief Terrazas. November, medical and psychological evals will continue. And in December, almost a year from now, we'll look at certifying a list. So we have a timeline. We're very focused on that. We look at it and talk about it every week, and we're moving toward uh, accomplishing all the goals that we have set. 
Um, so, so what's our strategy? To budget and staff the recruitment section, Chief Terrazas has done that, Mayor Garcetti have done that for us. The, the budget has increased three times. Uh, it was and before I got there. Um, we have a plan in place. Uh, you all have it before you. We're following a plan. We're not just uh, winging it by the seat of our pants. We've enlisted the support of a professional marketing firm, Quigley Simpson, um, to support us in our recruitment efforts. Um, when I first met with Chief Terrazas back in June, he, that was one of the critical items. He told me that we would have a marketing campaign. And I knew that based on my experience, my education, and my background, I'm not a professional marketer. I knew that that's not something that I wanted to take on. So we solicited the help of various marketing firms in the area. And uh, we came to Quigley Simpson, and we have been working with them for the last several months toward this new uh, marketing and recruitment campaign. Uh, design preparatory programs to assist recruit candidates throughout the hiring process. That, that picture at the top corner is difficult to see, but what that picture is is that's a group of firefighters on an off-duty basis. And uh, they're at the Stentorian Center, and what they're doing is helping um, candidates, firefighter candidates, work through the, the hose lay operation. They're there, they're there on an off-duty basis, and they've enlisted their support and their time to help candidates that look like them get through the process. Um, other preparatory programs that I want to talk to you about, and I've already mentioned most of them, the written exam, oral interview, pra practice sessions we do on a weekly basis, basis mock oral interviews. We have organized um, classes that any candidate in the process can register. And I want to talk about that real quickly. Um, we're trying to use technology to help us. And so what we've done now is we've gone to Eventbrite. Any program that we have, we try to guide and direct the candidate to um, Eventbrite so they can register. So as they register for a class and we begin to hire to have staffing there, I know how many people I need to prepare for. Why does Eventbrite help me also? Because it helps me track who shows up, what ethnicities, what gender, what their needs are. Do they have EMT yet? Do they have CPAT? All these things we're tracking and we're trying to be mindful of uh, technology and uh, data management as we move forward. Um, those are all of our programs, uh, CPAT and Stentorian Center and the Applicant Orientation Program at Old uh, Fire Station 21. So if we can click off this real quick, what I'd like to do is show you. <clears throat> I'm a woman of action, not just words. And so what we want to do is show you that. Um, Commissioner, can I just have you pull this one up real quick? So, I'm going to pull it up. so everything we do, we, we track and measure. And why do we do that? Because we want to make sure that the efforts the funding, the staffing, the resources that we're applying um, to these programs that we're hitting the right, do you need help? You got it? I know you're savvy enough to get through that silly little form. So we created this to be very user friendly. Are you okay? You got it? You don't have to tell your real age if you don't want to, I know. Others are sensitive about that. Uh, pull up, pull up the prep, please. Um, no, the the firefighter applicant, firefighter applicant, the form. So what I've asked the the uh, commissioner to fill in right now is basically this very simple form. So when the fire chief told us over the weekend he was uh, he was recruiting uh, magnet magnet kids at his presentation. Eventually, the fire chief's going to have this app on his phone. So whether he's at, a, he's at a, a, a school presentation or in the market and he sees somebody who he thinks is, looks to be a qualified candidate, he can hand them this app on his phone and have them fill it in. And hopefully, they can fill it in pretty quickly. Sue Stengel did it this morning pretty quick. But once we get through this form, and it's going to ask a series of questions. Have you, have you applied for firefighter before? Um, where did you meet the Los Angeles Fire Department? Is, was it at a, an independent recruitment event? Was it a college career fair? Was it at a college athletic event? Was it at a military event? Was it a community event? Was it a sporting or fitness event? So you, you hit all those things, 
And then when I come into the office in the morning or any time of the day, so could you uh, toggle over Cap Chick and get me to the form? So when I come over, and I know that yesterday, yesterday I had Captain Chick at UCLA uh, with the women's softball team. And yesterday afternoon, I had Captain Lewis at um, L.A. Harbor College at a career day for firefighters and EMTs. And last night, I had Firefighter Johnson at Oxnard Fire Academy um, doing recruitment there. I can come in in the morning, or if I can't sleep at night, I can open it up at night, and I can look and see how, how was our progress yesterday. And what I can tell you is... Yesterday, my folks reached, Tammy reached six viable female candidates out at UCLA. Okay, so she's telling me seven. I counted six. Uh, yesterday, Captain Lewis reached 36 viable candidates. And what I mean by viable candidates, people come up to our booths all the time and they talk to us. And they may not, they may not think it's for them. But those that stood there long enough like you did and took the time to fill out the form, I consider those some, somebody that wants to hear back from us, somebody that really wants to learn more about the fire service. So each of those people that we met yesterday, the 36 at LA Valley College and the seven at UCLA and the 20, however, at Oxnard Fire Academy, by the end of the morning, in fact, Tammy, if you toggle over, I'm betting that Lydia has already followed up with them and sent an email. Okay, so a little bit more. Not yet, toggle up. So after my folks go out, and you can see on the very far column there, that's our follow-up. So that's based on yesterday afternoon. We've already sent them a follow-up email and an invite to come to Drill Tower 21 and be exposed to the job of the firefighter, the tools and equipment that we use, and um, also um, the testing process. Tammy, will you click on the, the uh, graphics? So now what I can see, and I can't really see that, I'll be honest. Um, I'll have to look back here. So look at this chart. This is telling. We started this in October. October 13th, we started using this program. And the people we've been recruiting since then, 31% of them are women and 69% are men. So I know that at least I'm doing better at my recruiting than the makeup, for sure, of my fire department. We're out there at places, we're trying to find qualified candidates, and this tells me what my staff is doing. So if you stop there, you can look. Tammy, toggle down a little bit, please. Uh, other way. Uh, yeah, right there, right there. So if you look at this one, this one indicates where we're at. And I know um, Commissioner Glazier is really concerned. Where are you guys at? What are you doing? College athletic events, college presentations. Look at the individual recruiters. I got people recruiting for us all over the place. Sporting and fitness events, career job fairs, fire academies. I'm not too happy with our military events, but we haven't really been tracking them since last week. That's brand new. We just built that last week. We'll be doing a lot more of that. We're doing a ton of that. We just haven't been tracking it until last week. Okay. So as we realize, what are we asking the right questions? Are, are we tracking the right things? We're learning and we're growing. And this is one thing we just added last week was military events. So I'm going to let you guys up on that. But I did want to take a minute and show you that every event we go to, we're tracking, we're measuring, we're following up. And those candidates that are serious firefighter candidates, they have every access to us, to the LA Fire Department, to my recruiters, and to every program that we have. We're creating an awareness that there are programs out there to help you um, prepare yourself to be a firefighter. So if you can get me out of Captain Chick's email, I'll keep going. I'm almost finished here. We're tracking and measuring everything. So we've been spending a lot of time at colleges, you can see. Um, we're learning that we're not always going to find uh, viable candidates. I learned that when I went to a uh, all-women's college without an athletic department. But what I learned there is there's lots of smart people there, lots of very smart people there who want to help us. And so of that presentation, we have two student worker and one intern that are going to come and help us with all this data management piece and tracking and measuring and figuring out if we're on track. Um, 
So to establish formal mentorship programs at educational institutions, these are the ones that since I've been here in the section, Long Beach State, UCLA, um, Cal State LA, Mount St. Mary's, USC, Cal State Fullerton, UC Irvine. We've been there, we've met, met folks there, we've developed relationships, and we're gonna be continued to be invited back year after year so that we can develop relationships. Uh, I've already shown you this uh, events by type, so I'm going to skip through that. Uh, another big area that we're focusing on is our youth development to expand the current cadet program, Crew 3, and other volunteer opportunities. I kind of already spoke to that with our internships and our student worker program. Uh, Chief Zipperman's in the field right now, and he's overseeing the uh, cadet and Crew 3 programs, so areas where we're trying to assist him is trying to find a way how we identify a process to bonus candidates, candidates that are volunteering their time to prepare themselves. Uh, we think there might be a way that they can get bonused and uh, get recognized through the hiring process. Uh, improving efforts to recruit workforce reflective of the city. I think I've shown you that. We're spending our time at military bases, Camp Pendleton, Wainimi. Um, tomorrow, I think my staff is going out to 29 Palms. We're going to be recruiting there. We're going to be going to Los Alamitos. We're going to even go see the Coast Guard and see if they have any viable candidates for us. Um, community, I think it's important. I get calls from the bosses behind me about weekly. Hey, Alicia, can you come out to the pancake breakfast at 61's on Sunday? Can you come to Friday Night Lights? Uh, we have a run in West Bureau. Can you come out to the uh, 5K run? Um, Yes, we can, and yes, we believe that it's important that we're engaged in the community, but is that really, are those events, is Fire Station 61's Pancake Breakfast where viable firefighter candidates are going to, are they going there to look for a job? We don't think so. Might we find one there? Yes, we might find some there, but when it comes to staffing and funding events, we're trying to be more strategic of how we do that. So what's the solution? The solution is that we provide training and materials so that the people behind me can provide that training and materials to their uh, 106 fire stations and we can do some recruiting at the fire station level with support from the firefighter recruitment section. Um, this is something that I, I, that I wanted to make uh, public for you all to see. We've been very strategic about finding where those uh, female candidates and underrepresented candidates are in the process. This is one example. So when Captain Chick got to the unit back in August, we went down to the personnel department and we looked through their data management system to see do we have women candidates in the, in the candidate pool? Are they there? And what we learned was that there were 75 of them. Current to today, there's 75, some that have passed the written some that have passed the oral interview, some that have, are in the background process, some that have, uh, are in the medical or psychological process. So we know we have them in the process. There are 75 of them. So with that, what do we do? Do we reach out to them and tell them about the programs we have and offer support and offer mentorship? Uh, the answer is yes, we do. And what you see from that on the uh, right side of the document you see uh, in, in class, 1403, there were two uh, female recruits in that class before any of us got assigned to the unit. And now in Drill Tower 40, since we've been doing some focused efforts, there's four currently in Drill Tower 40. In our next class coming up, we've, we can uh, show you that there's been six uh, firefighter recruits that have been identified and come out of the, the, the testing process and have been invited to come to the academy starting next month. This is an example. This is an example of what we've been able to do to see where those candidates are, the diverse candidates. This is one example of what we're doing to track female candidates. We're going to do the same thing for Asian Americans, for Hispanic Americans, and for African Americans. If they're in the candidate pool, we want to see where they're at. We want to know what resources they need to help them be successful, and we're going to offer those resources to them. Uh, I've shown you this already. Uh, partners with LAUS, uh, LAUSD and LAPD. Uh, we are partnering with LAUSD to develop that um, 
high school um, magnet program. Um, we're currently in the process of developing, uh, developing curriculum. I want you to look at the young lady at the bottom of the screen. Uh, when I was there, Joe, turn your head, look right there. When I was there two weeks ago to watch Captain Merez present to this group, these, this group was the 11 of high school magnet students at, uh, at Wilson High School. They're our first pilot. I was there the first day that a fire engine came out to their school. First time they saw fire apparatus. First time they saw turnouts. The first time they saw us really there in uniform. And I can tell you it was the first time they saw a female firefighter. And that girl in the corner, I saw her eyes light up like this is the job for me. I promise you that girl in the corner, she's going to be a firefighter. That girl is going to graduate the magnet program. She's going to probably become a fire explorer. And by the time she's 18 or maybe 20, she's going to be a firefighter. Mark my words on that. Right, Eddie? Uh, ensure effective, uh, effectiveness of our recruitment efforts. I've told you we're measuring, we're tracking everything we do using Google Forms and documents and the apps that we've created. We're, survey, we're doing a survey monkey after every prep program that we have. We're watching Facebook and our progress on Facebook, and we're tracking what we're doing on Eventbrite also. So it's going to be hard for me to come and make excuses next time I see you because everything we do is being tracked. That picture that you see on Facebook, that is when we started in September. So if you look at September 10th, the numbers start climbing. So before we took it, um, that, that social media account was managed by that one person over at Personnel. And when we took it over, you see the, um, the uh, posts and the um, page likes increase by almost 175%. So we're looking at what we're doing. So this is a couple pictures of our folks out there. There's Tammy yesterday at UCLA. We hope to get a couple, uh, a couple uh, All-American athletes here sometime soon, and not only for, from UCLA. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take some questions. I have some comments, actually. Okay. So good job with this. I think it was a really thorough report. Um, I'm happy that there's such a focus on you know increasing the number of women in the fire service. I feel like whenever we speak about other demographics, the focus is always on African Americans. But if you look at the two most underrepresented groups other than women, it's Latinos and Asians. And if you make a dent in those numbers, you're going to make a huge dent in the diversity of the department. And it's all the more confusing to me because LAPD is like 60% Latino. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be higher than like 31%. So I just kind of, you know, I hope that we have as much of an emphasis in that as we do when, as to other groups as well. We absolutely do, um, Madam President. And I'm happy to say that as I'm tracking our preparatory programs, I'm seeing an increase in the uh, Latin Americans as well. I, I want to make a point that uh, LAPD has a recruitment section that's, I think, triple or four times the staff of what we have here. But I can promise you that's an area that we're focusing. And I want you to know that um, I'm recruiting, I'm soliciting help from our firefighters. And uh, two weeks ago, I had Captain Wynn with me at one of my fitness expos. Because I believe it's important when we're at an expo or we're at a college or we're at UC Irvine that I have somebody in that booth that looks like the type of people we're trying to recruit. And so we're constantly building up our cadre, not only of military veterans when we go on the military bases, but we're also bringing folks with us when we go to those venues um, that look like the community that we're trying to uh, recruit. So I promise you we're looking at that. Okay. I, I would just like to uh, commend you on the report. From the almost the first time I started here two years ago, I recognized that a focused strategic plan for recruiting was important. And we've talked about this a lot at this meeting. So yeah. <laughs> We're happy to, I'm happy to see this plan. And what I'm hoping is, and I realize that, especially as a woman and a minority, that women 
recruitment is really important. Uh, having served in many positions as the only woman, it's very difficult. So I really appreciate the fact that you're going to focus on improving, uh, the, looking at increasing the number of women. And as a mother of daughters and granddaughters, you know, the whole works, I really understand and appreciate uh, the place that women have. But women in leadership really have a difficult time. And so I'm really hoping that this works. And not only will it work in bringing in uh, more women, but at the same time, maybe some of them will be African-American women and Latino women, and we'll fill those gaps <laughs> in other ways <laughs> that we um, may even find some uh, Native Americans, because I couldn't believe the census couldn't find any enough to count 1%. That was, ooh, I don't understand that. Anyway, um, my hope is that the whole diversity of the department will grow based on the, the methods and the techniques that you use in recruiting women. Because at, my concern has been all along the fact that we have a number of African Americans in the department, but many of them are reaching retirement. And you know how long it takes us to do anything in this department, in, in the city, I should say just this department, in the city. If we lose many of the people that we have, and we're losing women, and we also lost, we're losing women of color, so it's like, oh, wow, getting dinged twice. Um, that if we don't start really working on a method or a technique for recruiting uh, people to backfill these spaces, the department is not going to look like the women, the, I mean, like the uh, department, like the city. And I know that that's a part of the mayor's Back to Basics campaign, which I totally support. And I think that this plan, strategic plan, will work to help to improve the department and help us to reach back and bring back the basics of the city so that the department reflects the demographics of the city. And so I, with that, I'm really happy. Um, I, and I was happy to hear that you said you had already consulted. I had that on my questions. That consulted the, the various groups that work, the organizations that are in the, in the uh, fire department. And I really like this flyer. <laughs> Who's that in the picture there? She's got a great <laughs> smile. A great <laughs> smile. But is this, so this is going on every Wednesday? Every Wednesday night at Old Fire Station uh, 21, we wanted to try it as a pilot program. We're almost finished with our first month. The first night we had, the first Wednesday night, we had uh, 18. The second Wednesday night, I think it was 28. That's good. It was 28. And this, uh, this Wednesday, tomorrow night, thanks to our use of technology, we're already projecting that we have 33 people. Uh, signed up and that doesn't mean that others won't just walk in and I promise you that we're looking at who's showing up what ethnicities what backgrounds what genders and what we're providing them every resource and every support to help them be successful through the program oh that's very good um, I, uh, I I when you have programs like this if we could know about it because we could pass it on to community groups and make sure that they Using the, um, uh, the religious community, not necessarily for re becoming firefighters, but for helping us to recruit is right. a really good thing. And there are a lot of resources out there for that, for that particular group. Uh, I like the idea that you have this, uh, what is it, Quigley Simpson? Quigley Simpson is a, the um, group. Is that, uh, <coughs> is that a budgeted item? Do we pay them? Or how did we get that group? They're, they've volunteered their services pro bono. Oh. We looked at several uh, marketing firms who were interested in helping us uh, at no cost, and Quigley Simpson was far and above uh, <coughs> superior to the other organizations that offered their service, and specifically in their background with uh, women's marketing and uh, Fortune 500 type um, customers and clients they have chase uh, they have a lot of large clients and uh, we went with them and they they've been nothing but outstanding since the beginning we started working with them yeah I, I realize it is an outstanding group and it meets the requirements that I've 
set for myself in looking at people who work with us because it is a local group and they hire a lot of people from LA area. Um, and they do other social things, which I really like. But I was just curious as to how we ended up uh, getting them. But uh, again, I do commend you for the work that you're doing. And as I always say, the proof is in the pudding. So I'll look to see how many different pieces of colors I see <laughs> in women in the end when you bring back data. And I like the idea that you are bringing us data, the concrete stuff that we can really look at and measure. I will, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you for the well done report. Thank you. Uh, sorry if I could just before you, before you go. <laughs> Oh, okay, sir. Um, so, so, uh, so. I try to save you from him. The the the, uh, the one thing I want to say is I are a couple of things, but um, I don't want to overlook the fact that that um, we have an historic program here, which is um, we, we've w historically the approach was that kind of show up at big events. We weren't nearly as targeted as we could have been, and so I want to I want to recognize um, your openness to. Um, Doing things differently and bringing uh, the data into this, and really trying to uh, take some best practices from recruitment, the recruitment industry, and and put those into practice here, because I really do believe that that's gonna uh, that's gonna uh, get you what you want here, get us all what we want here. Uh, I I, I want to just um, uh, support what you're saying about targeting that um, we have limited resources, and so. You know, if there's going to be an investment, it should be where we think we're going to get the best yield for what we're going to do. Um, but at the same time, um, there's a big opportunity for all of our stakeholder groups here. Um, and, uh, you know, since I've been up here and since we've all been up here, we, I know we all hear from our stakeholder groups about um, the need for um, diversity in hiring. And it's time for everyone to step up. Uh, this is not just the problem of our recruitment section. This is everybody's problem and um, I would encourage you as you talk about training to have those stakeholder groups in and have them make commitments of we're going to give you this number of people this number of evenings we're going to make this many phone calls um, and, I, and I, I would like to see those commitments in writing not here but uh, you know um, you know of this is what we're going to do and here's how we're going to do it together because I don't want to get to the end of this process and have folks throw in stones um, and and because they didn't participate um, and they didn't support what we were trying to do, um, so I, I encourage you to to um, to get get those ironclad commitments from from uh, the, the members of this department who who I know are interested in the changes that we want to see and uh, and make sure that they're they're part of this part of this solution. Um, on the uh, the data and the metrics, I think it's great. I'm really 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 pleased to see the targets in here. Um, you know, I, I hope we can see uh, some kind of an update from you maybe every two months. Um, I, I, and, and I know that since this is just starting, um, you may adjust your targets along the way um, as you kind of get some experience here to see um, what happens. But I think that, that having that data, having those targets, that's not only going to support us um, and support you in, in a success in this time frame of getting ready for the next list. It's going to be a, a record for us, um, for whoever comes as we continue the recruitment effort to continue to refine what we do and not forget, not lose the institutional knowledge um, so that we really do have a continuous um, process here. But thanks so much for the work on this. I think this is great. Um, and I look forward to seeing this continue to evolve um, and, and see where we end up. Um, one thing on here on your target list, you may be thinking about this already. Um, I just didn't see them listed here. But don't forget the LA uh, USD occupational centers, the adult schools. Um, they have EMT classes. Um, those may be good places for targeted outreach as well. Um, and I'm sure those folks would be more than happy to, to uh, connect with you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Madam President, I have, I'd like to make a comment as well. Um, great job, Chief. We appreciate your enthusiasm and your presentation. When we first started talking about enhancing our recruitment efforts, I had a long discussion with Chief Rideout, and we had a plan. And we continued to refine the plan and a plan is, is great, but you need somebody to actualize the plan. And Chief Welch and her team, Captain Chick, and all your staff have really stepped up to make the plan happen. Uh, I really like the enthusiasm. You can see there's a passion in her. She's uh, driven. We have regular meetings. Uh, we have a lot of discussion. We're looking at short-term things, like the college campuses, like the military recruitment, and as well as long-term things high school magnet program cadets 
I know that this is not going to be fixed overnight, but I'm very confident that we're on the right path and we will achieve a greater uh, diversity when we're done. So thank you, Chief. Uh, congratulations to your staff so far. So far. <laughs> Uh, Madam President, yes. the the issue with the pancake breakfast and et cetera, is that more of a public, could that be more of a public relations thing as opposed to recruitment? It, it's, it is. It's both. It's, we have 106 fire stations. We have community events all the time. So I, the plan is to educate our, our people in the field so that they can identify a potential candidate and to be equipped to inform the candidate, present some literature, refer them to the website. Um, at the end of the day, I agree with Chief Welch's approach. We need to be strategic in where, where we deploy our people. Right. So we want to leverage our, our field resources to help us with this goal. Okay, move to uh, receive and file item 5C. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So <laughs> moving on to 5D, which is report by the Department on the Fire Prevention Bureau's inspection activity for the third quarter. Good morning, Commissioners, Good morning. Chief Grazes, Julie, uh, John Vitovich, Deputy Chief, Bureau of Fire Prevention. Uh, in front of you is our third quarter report on fire prevention activities throughout the city. And that's key, uh, based after uh, we, we looked at our audit and our number of overdue inspections, Fire Chief Traz has directed me to not only oversee the fire prevention within the Fire Prevention Bureau, but citywide and with cooperation of the four bureau commanders in the field, this re report reflects that partnership. But I, I, I want to touch on uh, in the beginning when Chief appointed me, he said we need to be data driven and that's where the Fire Prevention Bureau has gone. If you look at page two uh, of the report, uh, this report highlights, highlights our overdue inspections, our COOPA, which was part of a, a state audit our industrial, commercial, and public safety sections, our brush inspections, our development services, and, and now emergency operations. I'm really happy to stand in front of you to say that um, we are now down to 3,416 uh, overdue inspections, and we're on track to ha have those overdue inspections caught up by February. Uh, the one thing as we analyze data, uh, we are only, we're always going to have a certain amount of inspections, you know, over that 365 day mark, just based on the inspection cycle. So our, our true goal is to maintain the 95 percentile uh, of being uh, complete. If we look at our COOPA section, um, obviously this, this has been highlighted um, as an area of concern. Uh, the report in front of you, COOPA is one of our, our sections that is not on an annual cycle or a yearly cycle, excuse me, it's, it's on a, a fiscal cycle beginning of July. And if you look at the first quarter of last year, uh, 2014, and it look at our underground tanks, the UST facilities and HAZMAT, UST we only had completed 13% of that work and in HAZMAT enforcement only 2%. This past quarter, through a focused approach, appropriate staffing, and, and actually scheduling the inspector's work, we've seen that productivity increase to 24% uh, for the first quarter for UST and 23% for HAZMAT enforcement. That's a significant improvement, and that's with the leadership that we've instilled there, and again, uh, right-sizing uh, those areas with the appropriate staffing. Within our industrial, commercial, and public safety section on page four, um, when I met with Commissioner Glazier as he took over as the liaison uh, for Commissioner Fazio as the fire prevention liaison, he really wanted to see um, w you know, what all this means and are we hitting our goals. And it's really simple for us. Our goal is to, if we can get to 25% per, 25 of our inspections every quarter, we're on target. Uh, as you can see in our industrial commercial section and, and our public safety section, for our, our first quarter, we're still not hitting that, that overall 75% gold. We're at 63.27% for industrial commercial and 67.16% um, for the public safety section. However, what's key here, those numbers 
are where we were after the entire year last year with still a quarter to go. So we're projected to be in the 80, you know, in the 80s when this is complete. Still not where we, uh, you know, so we're not going to be where we want to be, but with with a budget uh, uh, request moving forward with additional inspectors identified for where we need to be, um, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, the two areas that I do want to talk about is the state mandated inspections, which is high rise in our schools. Uh, we're going to be completed for the first time, based on the data I'm looking at, first time in 15 years to have all the schools in the city completed mm -hmm. in a one-year cycle. And that's significant. Again, that's with, yeah. with the support of this commission and the promotion of those eight additional inspectors and our Operation Catch-Up program where we focused targeted areas on putting inspectors where the state mandates are. Uh, looking at, at our, our brush clearance, um, Brush is, brush is something that we're really looking at reinventing. We have almost 141,000 brush parcels within the very high severity zone. And right now, we inspect every one of those parcels. In our discussion with the state fire marshal, um, all those parcels do not have to be inspected. The only parcels that really require an inspection are the in, uh, parcels that abut next to vegetation. If you happen to live in the hillsides and you're across the street from a, uh, in, in just a 5,000 square foot lot, uh, lot with a home, State Fire Marshal says you don't have to inspect those. And that, that seems to be true as we're trending looking at data. Uh, about 77,000 parcels opt out of the inspection. They self-inspect. And we, we've been looking at the data over the last five years and those are consistent. These people do not have vegetation next to them, maybe across the street. But the state boundaries, they create that zone for us. And, and we're going to be bringing a report forward to change the way we do business there. Question, is this also, because uh, we assess fees, right, for this is also the same yeah, unit? Correct. And this is the same inspections? Right, so when, when someone opts out, they don't pay the fee. Okay. So. And they're allowed to opt out just because it's not, it's a lesser fire well, danger? Well, they're, they're, they're self-inspecting, and, and what we're seeing is, what they're telling us is they have no brush clearance around them, but they happen to live in the, in the very high severity zone, so that's why they're opting out. Yeah, I, I self-inspect. I have a property in the high severity zone, and basically what I do is I certify that I have cleared my brush every year and send that in, and then mm -hmm. presumably somebody occasionally will take a look uh, you know, they audit, or does everybody get you know get a visual inspection? Okay. Right now, everyone gets gets a visual inspection. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. and I always clear my brush. <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, Apparently, because you haven't been fined. <laughs> Uh, and, and then in, in our fire development services section, the, what, what I wanted to share is, uh, again, through the uh, development service re reform, uh, we were asked to provide additional services in, in the Valley and West Los Angeles. In doing so, we opened up our West LA office in July. And, you know, just the, it, it, the numbers are still low. We served 225 people during that time. But as building and safety now expands their mechanical plan check there, we're going to see an increase, but it's taken away some of the workload from our metro office, which is good. And, and more importantly, it's saving customers the trip from having to do work with building and safety in West Los Angeles. Then they need a fire department clearance and they were going to have to drive downtown. So we're, we're saving uh, the customers trips and we're part of uh, building and safety's uh, code calling where they call and and check on services and we're getting a lot of accolades for opening up that new office. The other thing that we're seeing at development services for our field inspections, over a third of our inspections are being requested after hours or before hours because buildings don't allow testing. And that's something that we're going to really have to sit down with and look if we adjust an inspector's work, work schedule to accommodate those schedules. We have a alternate work schedule for our public safety section inspectors. <laughs> And it's something we may need to consider in the future, but we'll obviously we have to sit down and discuss that with labor. And then finally, with, with the, the four bureau uh, uh, inst uh, concept and, and where we're going, uh, the one, one thing I really want to point out is 
you know, we know geographically the valley is big. And as you can see uh, on the first column, the Valley Bureau has 23,007 inspections that our fire station personnel are responsible for. That's a significant workload. And, and the, the field has 51,663. Um, looking at, at this data, uh, each of our bureaus, or overall the bureaus are at 22%. And going back last year for the first quarter, we were at 7%. So we've seen a 15% increase in, as the bureau commanders now are paying close attention to fire prevention. So in conclusion, working together with, with the, the four bureaus, with the fire chief, the FPB and, and the department is moving in the results and establishing the results that we expected. Any additional questions? Oh, great! Uh, uh, th thanks. This is this is uh, this is great. Um, I love the conciseness, the clarity in here. This is really a nice the data, and, and the, yeah, and the data to be able to see to be able to see exactly what's going on. A um, couple questions for you. So, uh, I totally get the uh, the per the uh, percentile. Um, um, and you want to have ninety five percent. Or rather, the percentages, the fractals. So you want to have 95% uh, of our inspections done within 365 days. So if it's listed as overdue, that means it's aged past 365 days. That's, Is that correct. the definition. That's okay, correct. great. Um, the um, on the uh, the inspection, the industrial, commercial, and public safety inspections. Um, so, so you were talking about. Schools. So on here, it's listed as schools and churches with 44% complete against a 75% goal. But then you said there was something about. So yeah. So this is third quarter data. We 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 have a um, another month and a half data presented now, uh, and and we're focusing uh, our catch up inspectors to complete all the schools. All the LAUSD schools have been completed. Mm -hmm. Now we're working on the charters, the privates, and so forth to complete during the year. So I, I'm not sure where the current number of schools are. I'm, I think we're in the high 60s, though. Is that because there's churches are in there, too? So maybe we're ahead on schools, behind on churches? or Well, the, the way our system tracks schools and churches, um, a lot of churches have a school attached, and, I, and there's not an um, electronic way to separate those, so it has to be manual. As we move towards a different fire prevention system, we want to be able to pull just schools out because um, that, that is the requirement. I see. Um, so, you know, I think the, the first thing that is major progress is that we actually have the data in front of us and we can see exactly where we're at, which is great. So then the next, um, I think the, the, the next milestone for us is when we are um, – getting 95 percent completion in all of our units um, by the end of the year I think my question to you is how do we do that um, presumably as we finish operation catch-up you're going to be able to reassign some of those inspection resources back to their original unit so we'll start to see that now I think my concern is that if we are coming in under we're, we're going to start generating more overdues um, you know at the end of the year that we don't get to and so we'll have a hard time really ever getting to that place of 95% completed by um, within the 365 day time frame. Yeah, so with, with the focus um, on the um, overdue inspections, there's going to be some, some uh, occupancies within the city that as we balance out the inspection cycle, they're going to get an inspection in less than a year. You know, they may get an inspection in seven months, nine months, or, or so forth. The, the key here as well is as, as we, we're building a program for our supervisors to have the inspections their units do on a scheduling calendar so we know every month what how many inspections need to be done more importantly um, you know we like currently we have eight inspectors that are off for some reason within the fire prevention bureau that work historically when someone goes off sits we that's that's unacceptable so we want to have that schedule so we can move the workforce around to to ensure that we continue inspections when someone's off so are we uh, – great. Um, are we – what do you think? I mean, if, if you were going to project for our end of year, do you think we're going to get to – do you think we'll get to 95% for most of these folks? Or uh, we'll be, no, no. We're, we're, we're projected to be in the, the 80s. 80s. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and so, so I think something I'm sure it's of interest to this commission is what, what do we need to do to help you get to 95 um, at the end of every year? 
Um, and, and you know, likewise, you know, um, I know you've got you've you've been great about presenting your continual de- um, your, your continued work in the bureau of of continuing to kind of overhaul certain aspects of which I think is great. Um, but that that's uh, not a question I would ask you to answer right this second. But um, but something to think about is how do we get to that place where we are seeing ninety five complete ninety five percent completion. Um, of that, and also I would encourage you. You know, when you when you do the report to, um, you know, you can restate the goals, which is you know, uh, you know, ninety five percent of inspections are complete within a year for every unit. Um, you know, zero percent are going to age more than, you know, uh, two years or or, or or whatever it is. So we kind of have those really cl- clear goals there, and then um, I love being able to see. How that's going, I think that's really, um, really useful. So um, maybe, maybe that's a conversation for another time. But um, you know, w- w- what is it that we have to do to make sure that fire prevention is adequately resourced so that we are meeting the mandate of that ninety-five percent? Well, I think you know by by approving the report a few months back um, and our and our analytics requesting to start growing the fire prevention bureau back with inspectors where we need them. Uh, the chief's budget request has has inspectors in it as it moves forward so really you know the continued support through that budget process to ensure that they don't get cut yeah and by the same token i would say um you know in in return for additional budget budgets and authorities um what you know what i think we need from you is a measure of efficiency in your department to make sure that we aren't adding money in um to to uh, to an inefficient structure, and so I know that you and I have talked about this, but right. continuing to really keep a real close eye on: Are we putting money in where it's needed, and is that money being used to the efficiency that our taxpayers expect, right. um, so, uh, so that we aren't just uh, you know putting money in and, and covering up for a, a serious inefficiency that's going on in the department? Um, so I, I throw that out there just as a as a uh, an expectation, and which I know you you know, but yeah, I think the you know as you know we've heard Chief Welsh's um, discussion on technology. Technology is key for the Fire Prevention Bureau to be successful. Um, we still don't have a system that mobilizes us. We still have a system where inspectors drive here and drive to their districts and so forth. Our reorganization is going to fix some of that as we decentralize them closer. But they are, they're not allowed, other than our COOPA inspectors, to complete that inspection in the field. Um, the goal the chief and I have spoken about, Chief Mathis, is to optimize the workforce and to ensure that you know, they can start their day in the field for more efficiency and finish in the field and be able to upload their work into the cloud. Uh, that's going to be critical to get us really, without adding a, a ton of additional resources, just to give our folks the tools to be uh, successful. For our people not to have a cell phone, a smartphone um, in this day and age, it, do, it doesn't make business sense. So we're moving in that direction as well. That makes a lot of sense, and I, and I think that's an easy one to do the to do that equation on paper of you know one inspector <laughs> equals you know or or you know f- you know fifty mobile devices equals same cost as you know one hundred fifty percent of an FTE for an inspector that we wouldn't you know. That, that's a very clear efficiency equation there, and um, so you know, as we continue in our budget discussions, that's something we should definitely be surfacing. Thank you so much. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a question, <coughs> Chief Vidovich? Just one more question. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for your report. I look forward oh. to them. You, every time you give them, you're improving with the inspections and I think that's good you're you're on target as far as knowing the importance of getting the work done um, but you have all the inspectors that you need is that that's well right now our all our our current authorities <coughs> are filled um, however we we have requested additional inspectors in next fiscal year's budget oh, okay and the churches do you inspect all of the churches in the city of Los Angeles yes ma'am every church um, and on the schools, do you inspect the charter schools? Yes, we do. Okay. What, uh, do hospitals come out of institutions? That's correct. They're inspected annually as well. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for the work you're doing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Move to receiving file item 5D. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, and no public comment. So that's it. We can adjourn. Uh, I move to adjourn. Uh, okay. Second. Second.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye